nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to another project video. Going all the way back to my childhood, there were certain things I always wanted but never got. One of them being a spaceship. Specifically, I think I just wanted a big instrument panel with a bunch of buttons, blinking lights, displays that would show cool but pointless graphics. And uh, now I actually got a kid and the time has come to finally realize this childhood dream and build this thing for my daughter. So I got this space under the stairs that I closed up to make some kind of playroom, but it didn't get very far. And now I'm thinking this would be the perfect room for the spaceship simulator. My plan is to fit the entire installation on the end wall on a big sheet of plywood so I can hide all the electronics behind it. Normally I would start off any project by making a detailed plan and then buy the exact parts that I need. This time, however, I wasn't really sure where the project was going, so to get some inspiration I simply started to buy a bunch of parts like a joystick, some buttons, some displays. And when I had all the parts in front of me I measured them, made the parts in CAD and started drawing a modular control panel. This is my rough plan. A display in the middle, speakers on the side, a huge 7 segment countdown display on the top, RGB LED strips in the ceiling and most importantly the console with a bunch of buttons, knobs and LEDs. There's an LED 7 segment display for altitude, speed and mission time, two linear LED bar graphs to show pressure, a communications module to talk with mission control housing a big color touchscreen, a speaker and some buttons. This is also the module that holds the Raspberry Pi running the main application. And then there's a joystick module with four backlit buttons. From there I started drawing the schematics and designed the circuit boards and ordered them immediately. As soon as I got them, I started soldering. I usually start off by soldering the corners of the finest pitch components, then apply a lot of flux, and then use a wide tip for maximum heat transfer. Finally, I clean off the remaining flux with isopropyl alcohol. With the circuit board soldered, I could finally start machining the aluminium front panels on my CNC router. With all the panels finished, I could start assembly. Luckily, all the parts fit perfectly. At this point, I'm soldering a circuit board to the buttons. Its purpose is to read out the position of the joystick using an ADC converter, as well as reading out the state of the buttons. 
To simplify the wiring, this is controlled over I2C, so only a small 8-pin connector is required for both power supply and singles, which can even be daisy-chained from module to module. Now let's assemble the LED displays. Note the green acrylic plate between the LEDs and the front panel, more or less hiding the segments when they are turned off, but allowing all the light to pass through when they are turned on. At this point we can start fitting all the modules into the frame. Now you can see the real benefit of using SPI and I2C buses between the modules. There are hundreds of signals being controlled, but the wiring is actually quite minimal. Next up is labeling the front panels. I'll engrave these with the CNC router later, but for now a label would be good enough. The buttons also need labels. I'm curious to see how these will look when they light up. With the buttons assembled, it was time to test the electronics. I made a simple script to toggle an LED when a button was pushed, and it was really nice to see all the LEDs lighting up. With the whole instrument panel assembled, I think we should watch the launch sequence again. But hold on a bit. You might have wondered what numbers I'm actually showing in the instruments. I tried to look for actual rocket telemetry and stumbled upon this post from the NASA Space Flight Forum. A user called Space Opera had extracted telemetry from a Falcon 9 launch video using optical character recognition. I downloaded this data and ran polynomial regression on it to find expressions for altitude and velocity as a function of time. So to sum it up, what you're actually seeing here is telemetry from a Falcon 9. Second stage burn complete. 